after winning election as tribune of the plebs, only to have the consul Marcus Antonius disqualify him for not being of legal age, Caesar Octavianus began to see alignment with the Senate as his only way forward. By wooing Cicero, whom Octavianus fondly called father, the adopted son of Caesar convinced the father of the Republic of his honorable intentions. But Cicero, who had been absent from the Senate since March 17, had conditions. Publius Servilius Casca, a childhood friend of Caesar's and the very first of the assassins to bloody the dictator's body, was scheduled to begin his term as tribune of the plebs in December of the 44 BC year. Decimus Junius Brutus, another of Caesar's assassins, had the Senate support over Marcus Antonius as governor of Cisalpine Gaul. Serving as legate to Decimus Brutus was still another of Caesar's assassins, Pontius Aquila, the 45 BC tribune of the plebs who had been taunted by Caesar. And another legate, Servius Sulpicius Galba, also one of Caesar's assassins, was assigned to serve under the new consul, Aulus Hirtius. In order for Cicero to be willing to return to the Senate and agree to help the young Octavianus defeat Marcus Antonius, the orator needed assurances that he would uphold the Senate's prerogatives, even if it meant supporting the liberators. And although we are not told exactly how he did so, we know that Caesar Octavianus succeeded in convincing the father of the Republic that he could cooperate with his father's murderers. And so, when Marcus Antonius rushed to Brundisium to take control of his mutinous legions, Cicero used Antonius's absence to return to the Senate and deliver his first Philippic speech criticizing Antonius's actions. Each successive speech Cicero delivered up to the annals of Rome's history further demonized Marcus Antonius while simultaneously glorifying Caesar Octavianus, as Cicero assured the Senate the young man would not make the same mistakes as his father. Although the consuls Hirtius and Panzer took office on the first day of the 43 BC year, it was not until January 7 that Octavianus was inducted into the Senate as a propraetor, which gave him the right to vote alongside the sitting consuls, though they outranked him by office. As the consul, Vibius Panzer began the 43 BC year by levying new troops to march to Cisalpine Gaul, Gaius Octavius and the consul, Aulus Hirtius marched north. As the highest-ranking officer present, Hirtius immediately took command of Octavianus's Martia and 4th Macedonica legions. These were the two legions of veterans who had defected from Marcus Antonius, transferring their allegiance to the son of Caesar. It is unlikely that Caesar Octavianus was happy about having his two most experienced legions taken from him, or about being forced to march alongside Galba, one of his father's assassins, but as a newly legitimized member of the Senate, he had agreed to abide by senatorial rules. As Cicero continued his oratorical assault on Marcus Antonius, he also praised the deeds of Brutus and Cassius. Not only did Cicero urge governors in the East, as well as Rome's Eastern allies, to offer their military support to the liberators, but he imposed a heavy tax on the allies of Marcus Antonius within Italy. In response to Cicero's heavy taxation, Publius Ventidius, a man who had been a favorite of Caesar's, began raising troops in support of Marcus Antonius. As a child, Ventidius and his mother had been captured during Rome's social war and were ultimately forced to march in chains as prisoners in the triumphal parade of Pompeius Strabo. Then, as a young man, Ventidius joined the military and, having no love for the Pompeius family, sided with Caesar during the civil war. Ventidius now saw Cicero's manipulation of the Senate as a means of resurrecting the Pompeian faction, and was anxious to do his part to guarantee the success of the Caesarian party. Marching his legions northward, however, Ventidius was blocked by the legions of Aulus Hirtius and Gaius Octavius, and was forced to withdraw to Picenum. By the end of March of 43 BC, Octavianus and Hirtius were camped outside of Mutina, awaiting Pouncer's four legions of newly levied recruits which had departed Rome on March 19. As the four legions were closing in on Mutina, just on the other side of the Forum Bellorum marshlands, Lucius Antonius, the brother of Marcus Antonius, launched a surprise attack against the camp of Aulus Hirtius and Caesar Octavianus. Engaged in defending their camps, 
they did not realize that Marcus Antonius had discreetly moved his 2nd and 35th legions, along with his Moorish cavalry and Praetorian cohorts, out of Mutina and towards the Martians, in order to lay an ambush for Panzer's oncoming new recruits. But Aldus Hirtius and Caesar Octavianus, in anticipation of Panzer's arrival, sent out the Martia Legion, five cohorts of raw recruits, and Octavianus's Praetorian bodyguard to afford the legions protection on their journey through the marshes. On April 14, under the command of legates Servius Sulpicius Galba and Decimus Carfulinus, the legions crossed the marshlands in the darkness. By morning, they appeared on the Via Emilia to march ahead of Panzer's newly levied recruits, who did not realize that Marcus Antonius had his men hidden in the marshes and that a battle formation awaited them on the road ahead. In response to the sudden threat, the commanders ordered many of the raw recruits to turn back towards camp, which was north of the town of Bononia. The Marsha veterans then split into two groups, facing Antonius's flanking 2nd and 35th legions, while Octavianus's Praetorian cohort took up the middle against the Praetorian cohort which made up Antonius's centre. There was intense hostility between the opposing armies as they faced one another. The legions of Antonius considered the men of the Martia to be traitors for having defected from Antonius to stand and fight alongside men who had murdered Caesar. The men from the Martia considered Antonius's men traitors for not serving the Republic and for marching under the command of the very man who had executed the Martia's legionaries at Brundisium. Because both armies were made up primarily of Roman veterans, the tactics used to intimidate foreign enemies were common knowledge, making them ineffective between Roman armies, and so neither side let out a battle cry. In silence, the two armies fought ruthlessly against one another, with only the sounds of clashing weapons audible above the groans and screams of the injured and fallen, which were muffled by the thickness of the marshes. As Panzer's right flank, under the command of Carfulinus, began making progress, pushing back Antonius's 35th legion. Panzer simultaneously lost ground on his left flank as Antonius's 2nd legion pushed forward. Finally, Antonius's Moorish cavalry circled the Martia legion holding the right flank, and the consular army began to collapse. As Antonius's army pushed forward, and the brutal fighting grew more fierce, Vibius Panzer and Decimus Carfulinus were both injured and carried from the field of battle by their retreating men. In a bitter battle, Antonius's Praetorian cohorts clashed with the Praetorian cohorts belonging to Caesar Octavianus as the consular army began to draw back. Every last man belonging to Caesar Octavianus was cut down by the forces of Marcus Antonius, who chased Panzer's men down the Via Emilia and back to their camp. Outside the consular camp, new recruits stood ready to defend their men, but Marcus Antonius did not want to engage in a second siege. He withdrew, marching his victorious forces back to Mutina. As Antonius's legions reached Forum Galorum again, Aldus Hirtius, commanding the 4th Macedonica legion he had taken from Octavianus, attacked Antonius's exhausted legions. Although Marcus Antonius tried to rally his men, they were ineffectual against Hirtius's well-rested and tightly formed legions. As Antonius's men were slaughtered by the 4th Macedonica, many of the men broke ranks and fled into the safety of the marshes. Only with great difficulty did Marcus Antonius manage to rouse the few men who remained to extricate himself from the battle and eke out an escape from Forum Galorum. When Antonius returned to the safety of his siege works surrounding Mutina, he had lost more than half the legions under his command just the night before. What, only hours ago, had been a decisive victory for the forces of Marcus Antonius, turned at once into a devastating and humiliating defeat for the now isolated Caesarian.